We're gonna pick a random product from the Amazon search page and then we're going to model, texture and render this in Blender. You can then use this 3D model to make animations like this and some 3D artist which isn't you got paid good money for making this, even though he might not even be better than you. If you want to learn more about the tools and techniques that you see me use in these tutorials, I put everything that I know about modeling in Blender into my new ebook, so check it out, the link is below. Let's talk about the references. First of all, we're going to need a picture from the front, which is what we're going to use to determine the dimensions in Blender. This is effectively like a blueprint. And usually when you look at a product page on Amazon, the first product picture is a front view of that product. So you can use that as a blueprint. Just click it, right click, open image in new tab, and there's your reference image. So right click, save image as, we're going to name this reference. And then I got this little program installed to my computer, which is called Pure Ref. This is just a little window that floats on your screen and you can copy paste images into here so you can look at them as you're working. For example, I can click on this picture, open it up, right click, copy. And then if I click on pure ref, I can just press control V to paste it in there. I can arrange the images whatever way I like. And I can just keep this on my screen as I'm working. It's totally free to get this. Just search for pure ref, click on this download button and then do whatever you got to do. I usually throw this shit on my second monitor. But if you don't have a second monitor, then you're probably going to want to make this window a bit smaller like this and place it somewhere on top of your outliner because nobody ever needs this thing anyway. In Blender, we're going to go to side view, shift A, image reference and we're going to load up our front reference like this. I also want a little bit of transparency on this. We're going to throw that in the background and then we're going to align it with the center of the world. This is the 15th version of the Apple iPhone. How many of these fucking things did they make? Here's an important thing that you have to keep in mind when you're modeling something like this. And when I say something like this, I'm talking about objects which have large, flat, simple surfaces with no details. And then it also has other parts where you have very fine details like these buttons on the side. This is a topology trick that I learned from Thomas Collin. And if you don't know this, you're going to have a hard time with something like this. When you're making objects like this, you want the density of your geometry to be consistent throughout the entire object. For example, we're going to start with a plane. We're going to rotate that and scale it up so it matches the size of the phone. Now, you might think that when you're making this phone, this surface doesn't have any details, so we're just going to leave that as is and then maybe you would use a boolean modifier on a cube like this to cut out the shape for this button this is wrong because then you would have a bunch of geometry over here around the button but you wouldn't have any geometry over here and this is going to give you shading problems it's going to make it really hard to cut stuff and use different tools modifiers are going to look like shit so you don't want to do this instead the right way to do this is the following you need to figure out a way to subdivide this so that all your faces are approximately the same size and shape for example if this is the width of the phone we need to add some horizontal loop cuts with control r like this so that we have squares on the side and if we do that then we also have to add some loop cuts like this so that everything else is made of little squares now it just kind of looks like everything is constructed from little cubes right and if you were to cut some kind of holes in this shape you would inset a surface like this and then you can reshape that into the shape of the hole or whatever and now you can make holes obviously this is just a shitty example but you're going to see what i'm talking about when we start making these buttons so now you're probably thinking Aryan, this isn't enough geometry we need to bevel the corners no you don't need to bevel the corners because if you bevel the corners look what happens we press Control b and now again we have a bunch of geometry over here which means we can't use our loop cuts over here if we subdivide this it goes to shit and it's just problem after problem instead you can add a subdivision surface modifier to this shape by selecting it and pressing control one or control two or control three or whatever and now your corners are a little bit rounded now if you don't think this looks good because when you subdivide this it doesn't give you a perfect quarter of a circle you can first adjust these corners so they form a quarter of a circle and this is going to work even better if we subdivide everything by selecting all the geometry pressing w and clicking on subdivide now we have more geometry which we can align with this curve here and this is going to start getting us closer to the result that we're looking for now the second problem is how do we turn this into a perfect curve like this well first of all we can probably agree that this curve starts somewhere around this vertex and it goes all the way up until this vertex if you don't agree then we can just slightly slide this to the left and we can slide this up as well but i'm going to place my 3d cursor onto a vertex where these two edge loops intersect so that's going to be over here and then if this geometry is going to make the curve that means we have one two three four five six edges on this curve and if these six edges make a quarter of a circle that means the full circle is going to have four times six edges which is 24 edges so i'm going to add a new circle here that circle needs to have 24 vertices or 24 edges we're going to rotate that so it's facing us and then we're going to align it with the geometry now it's a little bit taller than it is wide it doesn't matter too much i think this is going to work better if we add a circle only to this smaller part of the corner so instead i'm going to use a circle with one two three four 
it is on its quarter, which means the full circle is going to have 16 vertices. So I'm going to align that with my object. I'll delete all the vertices on this circle, which don't make the curve here. And now I can start aligning this geometry with the vertices on the circle, right? So to do this precisely, I'm going to place my 3D cursor on one vertex of the curve. Then I'll use my 3D cursor as a pivot point, And I'll take these three vertices over here. I'll press S to scale them. And then I'll press Shift X to exclude the X axis from the scaling. And now if I press zero, they're going to perfectly align with this vertex. I'll repeat that with all the other vertices like this. If this technique is confusing for you, I explained it in depth in my ebook, so you can go check it out over there. Now we're going to merge vertices by distance, and we've got a nice curve on one of the corners of the phone. If you want to change the size of this curve, here's how you can do that. Place your 3D cursor on top of the curve, then take this vertex down here and duplicate it and press right click to snap it back into place. With the 3D cursor as a pivot point, we're going to scale this to zero on the Z axis. And now this vertex marks the intersection of these two edges. So we can now place the 3D cursor on this vertex and select all the geometry of the curve with our brush tool. And again, we can scale this up by pressing S and Shift X to exclude the X axis. And this is going to change the size and shape of our curve. Now I can just delete all the other quarters of this phone. I'll place my 3D cursor in the middle and I'll duplicate it, right click, scale to minus one on the Y axis, then duplicate everything again, right click, scale to minus one on the Z axis. Shift N to correct the normals, merge vertices by distance. And we've got a rough shape for the iPhone. Now let's go to the back of the phone and make this camera thing here. This should be pretty simple. To do this, I'm going to shift my reference image to the side so that I align this other image with my model. And now I can see how large this camera is supposed to be. I'm going to select this face in the corner and then I'll shift select this face in the other corner of the camera. Inset this with I. And now we have this new area which we can use to create this. For the sake of simplicity, we can delete all the faces on the inside of this inset area for now. And I'm also going to replace this curve here with a bigger circle. So give me a circle with 24 vertices. We're going to place that over here and now we can use our 3d cursor to snap this geometry to the geometry of the new circle which we created ask thomas colin if there's a better way to do this because i'm not sure we're going to delete all this other geometry and now we have a curve which perfectly aligns with one corner of the camera thing so now if we place the 3d cursor in the middle of this space we can just delete some geometry from this side like this and then i'll take this quarter of a circle shift d right click scale to minus one on the y-axis and now it's on the other side here now i just have to figure out a way to fill this i'll fill these edges manually and that looks pretty good we're also going to delete this geometry on the bottom here and then take both of these curves shift the right click scale to minus one of the z axis and now we just have to fill these gaps again do you see now why it's so important that we have consistent geometry and consistent face sizes and shapes and all this i don't know how we would be able to fill this and connect all this geometry and copy it to the other side and all this other shit it's really important to do this so now we're going to fill this with an end gone inset this just slightly and extrude it out and now this is the place where we have the little camera lenses and all this other shit later we'll be able to bevel this or maybe we can subdivide it or whatever we'll figure that out when we get there and don't worry guys i am aware that we're gonna have to add a bevel here like this if we're using a sub d workflow the camera lenses should be pretty simple let's just make one really quickly we need a circle and let's do something like 64 vertices so we can do close-up shots rotate that scale it down fill extrude inset to get a little frame then we're going to extrude it again inset it again extrude it again inset it again then we can extrude it again maybe scale it down so we have this kind of bevel thing we're gonna push this outwards a little bit more more so we have some more space now we can extrude this inwards and make a little bevel over here now i'm going to place my 3d cursor in the middle of this little hole shift a give me a cube give me four levels of subdivision because now there's 64 vertices in this loop which means it's going to fit perfectly with the geometry of this circle over here apply the subdivision surface give me a cast modifier factor one control a to apply that we're going to delete one entire half of this sphere and now we're going to scale this down to the x axis object shade smooth and now the reflections are going to look nice on this when we add some materials later we're also going to add another surface on top of this like this this can just be an angon this is going to be a small glass surface which is going to cover this whole mechanism here for now let's leave it open because it looks better it's more fun to model when there's a bunch of details on your model now we're going to place this over here you can duplicate that as many times as you got to duplicate it some of these phones have five or six fucking cameras i don't understand why you can use the same method to make the flash thing here this is not nuclear physics i feel stupid for even showing this stuff in these tutorials if you can't figure out something which is this simple you shouldn't be watching this tutorial in the first place go watch the donut tutorial that's it now we just need some buttons on the side here's how you make the buttons we need some more geometry on the side to do this so let's select the body of the phone press ctrl 1 or ctrl 2 to subdivide this i think ctrl 1 is going to be better because otherwise we're gonna have too much geometry now we have to get this shit under control but i don't want to bevel it yet because then that's also going to be subdivided and i am going to apply this subdivision modifier first 
So instead, for now, I'm going to select all these edges, which should be sharp, which is going to be all the edges around the base of the phone and this edge around here. I'll press N to open this menu, go to item, crank up mean crease and set that to one. Now these edges are not going to be made smooth. Let's duplicate this and throw it in the side just in case we fuck something up. Apply one level of subdivision surface, get rid of this, whatever that is. And now we have some more geometry to make the buttons. So this is going to be pretty easy. The first button, which is the screen power button, is going to be just below the camera somewhere around here. It's going to be approximately like this. I can even see this in my background image. So I'm going to select some of the faces around this button, inset those faces to get the right width. Now you can see from side view that this inset area matches the length of the button. So let's delete these faces. This part has to be like a semicircle. So go up here and check statistics. Now when you select edges, you can see how many edges you have selected. We're going to select this entire segment over here. This consists of eight edges, which means if this is half of a circle, we can add a circle here with 16 vertices. We're going to scale that down. And then inside of you, we're going to zoom in as close as possible to make sure that these vertices align. Delete the lower half of the circle. And now you can just snap the surrounding geometry onto the vertices of the circle again. You can now place your 3D cursor in the middle. Take this arch up here. Shift the right click scale to minus one of the Z axis. Merge vertices by distance, correct the normals. And it looks like our phone is way too thick, but we can fix that easily. First of all, we got to scale down this semicircle by snapping the 3D cursor to what would be the middle of the circle if this was a full circle. Then select this geometry. We're going to scale that to 0.7. Do the same thing down here. And now you can align the rest of these vertices with some of these vertices from the semicircle. It doesn't really matter at this point if there's any twisting anymore. We're going to bring this forward a little bit like this. Then place the 3D cursor on the vertex on the back side of the phone. Select all the geometry in the phone except this hole that we made for the button. Also deselect this stuff around the camera. Now with the 3D cursor at a pivot point, we're going to scale everything down on the X axis until just geometry aligns with this hole here. You can make it as thin as you want. That's totally up to you. I don't really care because I'm not actually doing this for any client. I'm just doing this for the video. So I just got to show you guys these techniques. But if you're trying to be completely accurate, then get this shit under control. You don't want to let your client see something that's unrealistic. Now take this geometry extrude, right click and push it inwards. And to make the button itself, you can take this edge loop, Pete to separate it to a new object. Now just extrude it outwards slightly, fill it and make a tiny bevel on this edge loop to make the shading a bit nicer. We're going to make all the buttons using the same technique. I'm not going to show you that because I already showed you. Next, we got to get to the texturing part. I don't feel like doing that now. I'm going to do something else and then later I'll get back. So the lighting is going to be different because this episode is going to be recorded on two different occasions. Now listen to me very carefully. I had a very close look at these cameras right here. There's a bunch of details inside that you can't really see unless you pick up your phone and you look at the camera very closely. I've made some models right here that I'm about to bake as a normal map. This is what it appears to me is inside here. Then we're going to place these normal maps inside of these cylinders back in the iPhone model and we're going to cover that with a bit of glass. So let's quickly bake this as a normal map. Give me a new plane, which is going to be slightly larger than all this geometry below. Check the normals to make sure that everything is blue from the top. In the shading tab, add a new material to the top plane. Add an image texture node. In the image texture node, generate a new image. We're gonna name that camera lens normal map. 32 bit float, blank. Okay, color space is non-color. Select that node. Now deselect everything, select the geometry, then shift select the plane, switch the cycles, go to the bake menu, set the bake type to normal, check selected to active, reduce the render samples. Now hit bake and while it's baking, you can contemplate your life a little bit. Are you actually heading down the path that you wanna be headed down? Or are you just waiting for something good to happen to you? Do you have an attractive girlfriend? Keep in mind that you have to bake this in really high resolution. My resolution was 2048 and it's still grainy. So I made a new image which is gonna have a resolution of 4096. Once our normal map is baked, we're going to need a few more images. We're going to need a texture for the screensaver, which is ideally going to include this black spot also. And we're also going to need a roughness map, which is going to give us this Apple logo on the back. We're going to open this image in a new tab, save image as, and we're going to use upscale.media to upscale that image because the resolution was kind of shitty. Load up that screensaver. We're going to set that shit to 4X. And once it's ready, we can download the image. Add a new circle with something like 128 vertices. Fill in the circle in the shading tab, add a new material, and we're going to name that camera lens. In that new material, we're going to add an image texture node. And in that image texture node, we're going to open the normal map, which we just baked. Color space, non-color, run that through a normal map node. Give that a color so we can see what we're doing. And now we can UV unwrap this and in the UV editing workspace, we can adjust the normal map. Once we have the normal map visible on this lens, we're going to select this circular face, press I to inset and inset that until we have a circle for this separate area of the normal map node. Do that one more time 
time to get to the lens and now we can apply different materials to each of these surfaces. So we're going to add a new material slot in which we're going to load the same material, then duplicate that material, name that whatever, we're going to name this outer, give me a dark blue metallic color. We're going to duplicate that new material one more time for this middle segment that can be a dark gray metallic and we're going to repeat that one more time for the lens and now the lens looks pretty too. The frame for this camera can have a simple black metallic material and we can change that to whatever we want later according to the color of the phone itself. We just need a glass cover for this camera so let's take some of this geometry from out here, scale it down slightly, fill it and then extrude it to give it a little bit of thickness. Create a new material for this which we're going to name glass. In that glass material crank up the transmission, reduce the roughness to almost zero but not quite zero and now when we go to cycles rendered view this is going to be transparent and it's going to behave like glass. We can delete the other two cameras, we're going to copy this one and place it on the two other locations and I also got a special normal map ready for this cute little flash. You can see that normal map in my UV editor right here. I'm just going to place it on a different part of the normal map. This is supposed to be white. Also going to make that metallic because I think it looks cooler. And we're also going to cover this with a little glass cover. Next, let's start adding some materials to the body of the phone. First, we got to subdivide it. And once we subdivide it, we're going to make a bevel on these edges. So now that the model is complete, we can start adding some textures to it. Just in case we fuck up, let's duplicate this and throw it away one more time. I'm going to apply one level of subdivision surface of the phone and now give me a new material which we're going to name phone body i want this phone to be black i'm not going to make it blue or pink or any other bullshit color like that and now I'm going to mark an edge loop around the front part of the phone. Control E, mark seam, and face select mode, I'll press L to select the surface. U, unwrap. I want a new material for that, which we're going to name screen. And now we just have to apply the screen texture to this. So go to the shading tab, get rid of this, open up my screen saver, plug that into base color, and we're going to adjust that in the UV editing workspace. I'm going to try to match the phone body material with the outline of the screen saver. And that just makes it look a little bit more natural, as you can see right here. Obviously, the screen has to be completely shiny and reflective. I think it looks cool if we add a special material just underneath these cameras. Let's make that black metallic. Maybe we'll change that into a normal map or something. But now in the phone body, I'm going to add a noise texture node. Press Control T to give me a node wrangler. Run that shit through a color ramp node and plug it into the roughness input. Now I'm just going to increase the Y and the X scale. That way I can get these little lines on my texture. I think it looks even better with metallic turned on. And we're going to use the color ramp node to control the difference in the roughness on the lines. I need it to be quite subtle so we're gonna do something like this we're going to make a cheap copy of the apple logo so i don't get sued and notice how we got a black background and a white logo save that and we're going to apply that only to this area where we're supposed to have the logo so we can select this surface you unwrap open up the logo in an image texture node in the phone body material we're going to use this to dictate which part of this phone is going to have this roughness map and which one is just going to have a very simple shiny reflection over here. So give me a mixed color node. The color of the logo image is going to control the factor. Color A is going to be this noise texture setup we got going on over here. And color B is going to be black because that's supposed to be perfectly reflective like the logo. Now in the UV editing, we got our logo on this little surface right here. Plug the result into roughness. You can then invert the selection and make sure that all the other parts of the UV map are in some black area so that this doesn't affect them. You might have to rotate this a little bit to place it better. And now you got your little logo right there. You can easily change the color of the phone to whatever else you want and let me know in the comments if you want a tutorial for how to animate this and create a really cool product animation like you would expect to find on the company's platform because so far all of my videos are just about modeling and texturing but if you want to learn to animate this then let me know we can get into that too i'm gonna let you guys download this model on my patreon page along with all this other stuff that you see me making my videos and check out the fucking ebook like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already let me know in the comments what you want to see next and i'll see you in the next one